uh, Old Man Boom, who we heard from a few moments ago, also known as Mark Williams, but friends we learned uh, call you Boomer. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, welcome, Boomer. Thank you Cambridge very much. 105 Radio. You're local as well, I think. Yes, yeah. How that's, local? Um, St. Neots at the moment, Ely soon, used to live in Cambridge, so I just kind of hang around this area. Sort of circumnavigating yeah. Cambridgeshire, Cambridge really. Cambridgeshire, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah, and you did Strawberry Fair, I think, a few months back. I did, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How, how was that? Which stage did you play? Um... The wigwam, that's it. Yeah, no, it was really good fun. It was a, it was a nice hot day, which was really awesome. It's, ni- it's nice to see everyone there for like after such a long break because I can't remember the last time I went to Strawberry Fair. It's, it's, it's the kind of sort of getting back into the the routine again, really, mm. isn't it? And it's, it's like wandering around here. Everything is exactly the same as it was two years ago, but you're still not sure, and you kind of have to think, and then you you get reassured because the old fox is there with his fiddle again, <laughs> and uh, everything's fine. Yeah, no, it's lovely. It's, it's lovely just to be back. I mean, I haven't actually been to the folk festival in longer than it's longer than that, really. I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a bit mercenary. Like I haven't been to Strawberry Fair in a while and haven't been to the folk festival in a while. So you just got to book me to play it, and I will yeah, come. That sounds, sounds yeah, fair. If you book me, I will come. <laughs> and you're playing with Den this evening. That's yes. where you're going to be. Yeah, ten past seven, I'll be there. Okay, well, we're going to do a couple of songs for us. Um, which is song number? No, what is song number one? Uh, song number one is the title track of my oh, got an album come out. It came out in. April? Yeah, April. April, May time. Uh, I'm coming out to the title track off that. So it's called Devil and Saviour. So this will be the first time I've ever played it, actually, in front of anyone who I didn't record it with. So let's see how this one goes. <laughs> Score and maybe thirteen more with nothing left to prove. A levy sold on a heavy toll with a sale against rebuke. When the words became the ties that we choose, and the hope they rain calls hell to break loose. Verse and prose and bottle told a bar amongst the blues. A knuckle cracked on a bloody mouth and a joke that fed the news. There were words for them in the tones that they told. There were words for them, the new and the old. Through the love and lust we cross the pages like the sea With a weight upon your chest you found it harder to leave Yet with a halo round your neck you penned a voice for all to see You were a devil to some but a saviour to me Shot that comes turns a wicked charm to a vulgar sense of glee. With a seed across the void, you made a peace with sanity. In a life in which you gave up control, with a hand around his throat, you kept hold. And the world around you grew just like a rose amongst the weeds. You could barely catch your breath through clouds of smoke and pleasant trees. And with a bitter taste, you drank it down a wolf amongst the sheep. You were a devil to some, but a saviour to me. You were a devil to some, saviour to me. Thank you. 
Excellent. A technical question for you now. Yeah, go for was, it. Was that in standard tuning? Um, no. <laughs> ah. um, I retuned one string. Was it in no sawmill tuning then, possibly? It, maybe. I don't <laughs> know what that is. <laughs> Should I be asking that of all of my guests today? So oh, I, well, I, yes. Was that standard tuning? <laughs> well, it's because I dabble with the banjo, so ah, I was I kind of, I was very, very curious. I, I don't, to, don't I play to anywhere near your standard, but I recognise there was something going on that I didn't entirely recognise. I'm so. a big fan, because I play guitar as well, so I, play, mm. I like to use dadgad as a tuning, so that mm. I basically just translated that into a banjo. Right. But now you need to explain to me what dadgad is as well. <laughs> it's the, it's the, the, the notes are like D, A, D, G, and so on. Oh, okay, so I know, know that bit. Yep. what the normal notes are, but conveniently it spells dadgad. Mm. Very commonly used for playing uh, you know, Irish traditional music, for example. Mm. People move the the, the chord shapes up the neck so it's very common in folk circles part of your folk education Julian yeah, very you. important this, this is why I'm here to improve my, <laughs> my folk education we're all here to learn <laughs> so, so. Uh, Boomer your, your songs have quite a dark turn to them you know mm, that, that first one with mm. uh, you know, drinking the devil never never a good combination mm. oh, it depends on who you ask well, I, I guess that so. like a good old time to <laughs> um, yeah no I like to do all of them are darker like I have used like the sort of the term murder folk to describe kind of my music bit. I didn't invent that, I stole it from someone else. But mm. most of the songs is usually about terrible things or someone dies in it. Well, there's a big tradition of that in folk music. I don't know, anyway. it's yeah. folk music really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that one's actually like one of the nicest ones on the mm. album, because that, mm. that one's actually kind of a love letter to Charles Bukowski. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, obviously he obviously he was a terrible person. Let's not can't, can't mm. really hide that one. That's well established. But what an amazing writer, and I, I'm a huge fan of his. So yeah, that's that's this that's the, like the nice heartfelt one in it. And the, the mm. rest of the album is basically a collection of stories about terrible things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that album is that another? Because I guess like a lot of musicians, you know, we touched on it earlier. Lockdown was a bit of a time. Is, is that when the, the did that change your creative process in any way? It did, because I did almost nothing. So uh, <laughs> I, pl- mm. I, I oh, you went one of these people like uh, a previous guest who was, was online doing uh, I did, I did performances. Some, I did do some of that. So I did a few streaming shows and I'd, uh, I played a whole bunch to my friend Ben Sides, or B-Sides as he goes under. So I, I, he, lives, he lives around the corner for me, so he did one every week. So I'd pop around and be a guest on his or I'd do a couple of my own. But when it came, I did have the lofty plan of like, well, I'm, I've done an EP. Why don't I just write a whole album during lockdown? I've got all the time in the world. And like nothing came out. I got absolutely nothing done. I don't know why. I just. I mean, so what then was the spark which uh, help, helped you to start start putting it together? I think it was just being unleashed back into the world again, really. Mm. I mean, there's, it's, it was a weird one because the first song I remember writing afterwards was I went to my parents' house to have... Uh, just we just sat, sat in the garden and had like pizza and drank a whole bunch of beers and just had like a really nice time and then I immediately went home and then wrote a song but the song has nothing to do with what we do mm. there I mean because no, they're all fictional stories pretty much everything that's the, the one I played then is the only one which actually really has any base in anything you feel it have to be in the right almost like a mood based thing really and how mm. and, and how you feel which gets the creativeness yeah, going yeah I guess so or maybe I just got to a different level of drunk or something sure. like that you know? <laughs> well one of the negative things about lockdown one of the many things was was the lack of stimuli though wasn't it I mean how can you write if, if nothing's going on mm. well you can write about how miserable it is to be in lockdown and there are plenty of those songs around and yeah, I don't it's probably think better not to have written no, yeah, no one wants to hear a lockdown song. No, again, no, I don't think. there's not <laughs> no. many songs out there about the R number, is there? That's the mm. that, that's the <laughs> thing. It's quite dis- maybe you could write one. Because during lockdown, it was very depressing every week. I kind of enjoyed exactly. a lot of lockdown, to be honest. I'm, I like I'm quite social, but I'm also very solitary. So mm. the fact that everyone just kind of left me alone for a while was great. Quite enjoyed it. <laughs> did, did did have the occasional uh, positive moment. 